Okay, everybody, let me know if you can hear me. And uh, when we do, we're going to go live. You hear me? All right, great. Okay, guys, now let's do it. We're not even gonna do a countdown. We're just gonna go straight into it. <music> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Life from Lockdown episode. I think eighty-two. Are we at eighty-two now? Eighty-two or eighty-four? It's it's hard to keep track now. So anyway, good to see you all. Thanks for joining us. I see we've got lots of regulars here, uh, pretty much regulars in the house. Good to see you all. Um, and I've kind of just moved things around a little bit, hopefully to make it better. Um, one of the things is when I was reading the chat, I was always looking away. Someone commented on that. So I actually took away my middle screen. I've got two screens now. Repositioned the camera so that I can um, look closer into the camera and also we got a new microphone so let me know if the sound is any better um can you guys hear me better is the quality of that sound better let me know i'm gonna put my glasses on here so i can uh see the comments um see how it goes yeah and the picture behind there sound is good very nice sound thank you tracy and uh, the picture here behind me is a friend of mine, Ali Sabit. I don't know. Some of you guys know him. Some of you don't. But a uh, good friend of mine. He's an artist. And he actually created that for me when we got our studio. Um, oh, our first studio in Irvine. Gosh, that was mm, more than 10 years ago. <laughs> so it was a while ago. So he created that for Photoshop Cafe. And it kind of hung on the wall. And I was like, hey, why not throw it in the background so you guys can see it? Can I sing? Um, you really don't want me to sing. You're going to say, Tony, you'll say that the sound has suddenly got really bad. If you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can hear me uh, sing, you'll be like, hey, the sound went bad again. So anyway, um, it's great to super clear picture. Good. Well, we're trying to get there. If you guys remember when we first started, we had no camera. We just basically, it was just screen capture only. Um, then I added the webcam, then moved up to the Sony A7S III. And, um, you know, now we've got title screens and microphones. So we're slowly making this better and better. So hopefully uh, we do that. Test the mute button if he sings. Thanks, Daryl. Appreciate that. But you're probably quite right. <laughs> All right, so um, this week we are fortunate once again to have Boris Effects sponsor this uh, this stream. So thank you, Boris Effects, for that. And um, we're going to be doing some Photoshop CG photography. Um, we've got some cool stuff lined up, and we're going to be doing a little bit of optics. I know some of you guys use it, but also um, there is a brand new plugin, Sapphire Effects. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Sapphire Effects has been for video. It's part of the high-end suite. And now they have a Sapphire Effects for Photoshop. So we're going to just kind of take a first look at that as well this week. Um, and plus they're giving us a ridiculously nice discount, um, which well, we'll talk about as we get into the episode. Uh, Bruce is currently on the road, so he will be here eventually. Um, he is probably going to be about half an hour late if he makes it. Uh, he is driving right now somewhere between Orlando and um, Tampa. So if you see him, you know, wave to him and say, hey, Bruce, we're missing you. All right, so why don't we get started. I think it's just a good thing to just jump in right now. So I guess Tracy will be doing the drink orders this week. Get your drinks into Tracy, Daryl. And um, sorry, I just volunteered here. She didn't know. Well, Russ, Russ can do the uh, European drinks and Tracy can do the, the rest of them. How's that sound? All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share the screen. It's probably a good place to start. So why don't I start with two photos uh, we've got this photo here I shot in the background and th what we're going to do is we're going to do a cool little um, composite and then we're going to apply some effects. Now you might have seen a similar composite I've done as a YouTube video before and uh, this time we're just going to kind of take it maybe a little bit further. So what I want to do is open up both of these 
inside of camera raw so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly open bridge um, now of course you can work from lightroom if that's the way you prefer to work but here i am in bridge and i've got these two photographs that i shot now it's no mystery to this but if you're going to be doing a composite and you know you're going to be doing something in the same environment save yourself a lot of effort you know get the shot and then shoot a clean plate for the background now we can cut this out without doing that we can do content aware fill and all that fun stuff but honestly you're going to save yourself so much time if you um just shoot that background plate and a way to do it just pop it on a tripod and i'm just using a self timer if you have a photographer other than yourself you know or anybody to push the button they can push the button when you go by and you know you could push an empty button empty button the same button but an empty plate in this case i was just me so i just put it on time lapse and i think i did one second intervals and just rode backwards and forwards on my bike like nine thousand times and uh, of course when i wasn't there it got the clean plates all right enough about that but that's how you would shoot that now if you were smarter than i was you'd set it to manual focus and focus on the subject which i think i did i did it with the bike on the stand so it's not bad but let's open these we're going to choose open in camera raw so i'm in bridge and i'm opening both of these if you were in lightroom you could also go there so here we are inside of camera raw now the reason i'm opening these in camera raw is i want to do some um, adjustments now what you don't want to do is if you're making any adjustments and you're working with a background plate you want to make sure that those adjustments stay the same on all the photographs that is clutch or just very very important and what we can do is just click on these little three dots and choose select all or you could hit control a or the other way you could do is just hold down the shift key and click so you want to see that outline around both of these images and that is means that whenever i make an adjustment watch this like you know hey see how it's going to affect both the photos at once that's what you want so if when you're working on multiple photos you're doing any prep work there's a good tip select them all and then as we make those adjustments we don't have to worry about them not matching later which you know i've seen done so what i'm doing is i'm just expanding the dynamic range a little bit see that just recovering those highlights a smidge opening up the shadows another smidge i notice the helmet's getting a little milky so maybe i'm just going to push the whites just a touch but keeping an eye on the histogram so here's a tip if i hold down the alt or the option key as i increase this i can see where the clipping is see the helmet let's roll it back so we're not clipping the helmet we're brightening it up a little bit but not clipping it and i'm going to pull back just a little bit more to give myself a little headroom same thing in the shadows all right so we've essentially got these photos ready and now i'm just going to choose open and these are going to open inside of photoshop there we go so we've got our regular photo and then we've got our background plate now we want to combine them if you've been watching my streams for very long or any of my tutorials you'll know how to do that by now but what i'm going to do is just show you once again uh so we're going to go into the middle notice the little move tool is selected that would be the v key now with the move tool selected when i click and hold notice that little arrow thing like let me release it see how we get the four-sided arrow when i click and hold and start to move that disappears also it turns black that means that it's loaded with content so we want to combine the two images so drag up to the tab of the image you want to combine it with notice it's still black you don't see those little arrows i have not released yet really important let the new image open move the cursor into the middle now if you want it to stay centered or you want it to stay in position hold down the shift key so right now i'm still holding the mouse button and the shift key then i release the mouse button and now we've got these i know i kind of sorry for those experienced people and i kind of made that look laborious but you would be surprised at the amount of people that struggle to combine two images like that so i just wanted to do it just nice and easy so everyone can follow along all right great okay now if we show and hide notice that everything's looking pretty good it's nicely aligned because i was on a tripod if you were not aligned you could select both layers and choose edit then choose auto align layers and under auto align layers just choose auto and click ok 
but we don't need to do that because everything is perfectly aligned. But if it wasn't, that will align it for you. So that's just an extra tip there. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, he said he likes these uh, step by steps. I appreciate that. OK, so now all I need to do is just mask out the areas that I want to get rid of. Now, I could cut this out and, you know, or I could just mask away the areas we don't want. What I'm going to do is I actually am going to do a cutout. We're going to choose the top layer. Now, the reason I'm going to do this, is just going to save me having to paint all the way around the image to mask it. So it doesn't have to be a good selection. So we're going to use the magic tools and you'll see these under the object selection tool. I say the magic tools because the magic wand is there. I don't think that's what they're really called, but that's what I call them. And we're going to choose object selection or quick selection. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you choose is going to enable. Well, an object finder will be enabled. But if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you'll have the option to choose select subject. Well, this was added in Photoshop 20, uh, 2019. Earlier than that, you're going to have to use some other tools. So, of course, you know, if we roll over, we can say there's the objects and you can see there's the bike. It selected that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose select subject and select subject is just going to select the whole thing. And you know what? That looks pretty good to me. I think I like that. So what we want to do now is we're going to apply that to a layer mask. So I'm just going to click the layer mask. And we're going to mask that. Now, you're not going to see anything. It's probably going to look pretty much the same, except the spokes are missing. If I hide the background, you can see, oh, OK, that's what he selected. Not bad. Now, if I cared about those spokes, I would actually paint those back in. But this is the nice thing about doing this kind of a selection is, well, you know, we're going to get rid of those in a second, so it doesn't matter. Let me just grab my move tool. But we did lose some areas we'd like to keep. So with this mask on, remember how masks are? Hold the shift key and that hides the mask. Click again with the shift key. It shows the mask. If we want to view the mask on its own, hold down the alt or the option key and we can see there's the mask. It's a little tight. We're missing some detail. We want to bring it back. So let's just click on the image. Now I'm going to grab my brush. And what I want to do is let's hide the background just so you can see what's going on. But normally I wouldn't bother. And remember what I've been teaching you guys many, many times. People get confused with the black mask versus the white mask. OK, so we've heard things like black conceals and white reveals. But that could also be black conceals, white reveals, white conceals, black reveals. They rhyme, so it's not really that helpful to me. So an easier way to kind of think of this is imagine here if I turn out the lights, it gets darker. Of course, the autofocus or auto exposure on the camera will adjust for that. So what happens when I turn out those lights? It goes black. What does that mean when it's black? You can't see whatever's there in this room. If I turn the lights on, a white light blasts out and you can see what's in the room. Now, just imagine that our layer here is the room. Where it's white, you can see. Where it's black, you can't see. I don't think I can make it any simpler than that. So we want to see more areas. More areas? Areas. That's a new word. Areas. So we want to see more areas. So I'm going to hit the D key to reset and then the X key. So we've got white as the foreground color. And uh, if you can't see that because I'm there, I'll just go to the desktop. So we've got white set as the foreground color. You know what? I'll just double this thing. Then I can put myself on here. Let's go back here. And now you should be able to see the entire toolbar and me. Now, the only thing this microphone's not fixing here, and I'm glad you, hey, Andrew Kavanaugh, glad you could join us. Um, that's Andrew Kavanaugh from the uh, Photoshop and photography Facebook group. He has a big group, 250,000 members. Check it out. So thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Um, a lot of people know him, say hi to him. All right, so what we want to do is we want to show some of these areas and we're going to paint with white. So select the mask, not the image. Make sure the mask is active, you can tell there. And I'm just going to go over some of these areas that just look weird. Did I just let me make sure we're using white? After telling you that, I'm painting with black. And also make your opacity and flow all the way up. And if you're using a Wacom tablet, just turn off. And by the way, the tablet settings are up here. 
and I'm just turning off any dynamics so I don't have to press hard. I can just paint and this will just bring back the areas I want. All right, let's bring back the front. There we go, nice. Uh, it's the battery was missing on my e-bike here. Let's bring that back. Some areas here, I think I like my nose. I'd like to keep it. This frame looks kind of weird. Let's just kind of bring that back. So see what I'm doing is I'm just painting back the areas that I want to include. And because I have that background plate, I don't have to be good with this at all. You know, spokes if you want those, although I am going to get rid of that in a second. But if we view it on the background, you can see what's happening. Great. So now I've brought back the areas that I want to keep. That's awesome. But now I want to get rid of some areas. So remember what I said about the black and the white. Remember the white? It's turning the lights on, right? We want to turn these lights off. We want to make it dark. We want to hide some things. So we're going to paint with black or we're going to paint with nighttime. All right, so let's paint here. And notice as we do, we're making this wheel disappear. Now, I might want to make this brush just a little bit harder. So we're going to go up under the brush settings on the top left. And let's turn that hardness up. I don't want to be fully hard, maybe somewhere around about 86. Yes, I could make jokes about now, but I won't. OK, so let's keep going here. And we are going to paint away the back because I want to have this nice flying bicycle. So making fun of my flying bike, what do you guys ride? Riding a 10 speed? OK, just kidding. All right, let's keep going here. Anyone remember 10 speeds? Maybe a mountain bike, 18 speed mountain bike. What are they all like 21 speed now or something? All right, so notice I can paint away the areas that I don't want. And see how easy it is because I'm using that background plate, super easy. Now, if I didn't have the background plate, what I could do is just simply make the selection and then just use content aware fill to fill in those areas behind us. All right, I wanna drop a little shadow in here. So let's just hit the plus and then I'm gonna grab a brush and make sure we're painting with the black brush and I'm gonna make it soft again. So let's choose the brush settings. Hardness all the way down is soft. I'm just gonna move this mic a little bit cause it's kind of like right when my arm goes over my Wacom tablet. This is something I'm gonna to have to figure out. Mic placement, maybe I put it there, how's that? Does it still sound good? And it's not in my way anymore. All right, great. So what we want to do is we're going to use transfer because we want to use pen pressure. If you don't have that and you just have a mouse, drop the opacity down about 10%. But if you happen to be lucky and you have a Wacom tablet or some other brand, um, set opacity to pen pressure and flow to pen pressure. And then I'm going to take my flow down to up just a low number, around about anywhere under 10. And now I'm just going to paint in a little bit of a shadow. So just gently painting here. Just take your time, build it up. And, and a, a mistake people do is they get impatient and they try to do things too quickly and then they don't look good. If you want it to look good, just take your time. You know, the, the words never said by a, you know, the creator of something breakthrough or some incredible artist is it was easier isn't it easier to if you want to create something that's going to get attention you don't want to make it easier you know like just paint really hard it's easier yeah but we want quality all right great so now we've got our shadow there and because uh, sometimes easy can be the en enemy of good right everyone's doing it the easy way well if they know how but it's not always the best way. Sometimes it is, but sometimes, you know, it's worth that little effort. Like talk to Rod Shelley, for example, you know, that composite he did with that boat. It took him many, many hours uh, to get some good quality there. All right. So let's go ahead now and we're going to apply some effects. Now it's time to work with our Boris effects optics. So I'm going to select all the layers. Um, just grab the background layer. Oh, by the way, I hit the little icon there. Let me just show you. I probably didn't turn the background into a regular layer. Just hit the padlock. You don't have to do all the things you used to have to do. And just hold down the shift key, selects all the layers, you know, between the two. And we're going to right click and we're going to convert this to a smart object. Awesome. Now that we're working on a smart object, we can apply different types of effects. Sweet. 
Now I could have these on separate layers, uh, but in this case, we're just gonna, I'm just going to throw everything together because it'll it'll just be kind of fun. All right, so we're going to go up under the filter, and now we're going under the Boris effects, and we're going to use optics. And we'll talk about Sapphire in a second. This is brand new in Photoshop, but we're going to grab optics. And how many of you guys have optics already? Let us know in the comments underneath. Um, I believe you can download a free trial, but also we've got a discount, and I'll talk about that discount in a second, an exclusive discount for us. Um, so what I want to do is we're going to do something different than some of the other things I've done in optics, and I want to create a flame, like some kind of a an actual visual effect. So we're going to be working on the layer here. Why don't I just create a brand new effect layer here? I could have worked on the current one, but I, I, I'm just going to put another one on there. And now we've got a number of different effects here. Well, there's a ton of effects. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, you know, we've got all the colorizing effects. We'll get to that. We've got light effects, which we all love, right? Then we've also got render effects. And this is where, you know, I haven't really shown you guys a lot of the things here. And these can be adapted, you know, for example, muzzle flash. This is what we're going to use. You don't just have to use this for a muzzle flash from a gun, which is what it's designed for. But you can do all kinds of things on this. Let me just pull this down, make it a little bigger so you guys can see it. So what I want to do is we're going to grab a notice in the presets. You'll see the presets there. And um, you'll see there's different ones here. Why don't we grab the Colt 45? Now, some jokes could be made about the uh, you know, the proximity of that particular muzzle flash right now. Um, we're going to pull it down. <laughs> Let's grab the little crosshair and we're going to put it down the bottom there. OK, so that's. Not so funny, but um, definitely more practical. And of course, you know, we could choose, you know, there's a different presets. We could have, you know, if we had two two of these going, AK-47, Beretta, Colt, you know, and look for the one that's kind of starting where we want to go. Now, one of the nice things about working with this plugin optics, besides the, you know, just huge array of uh, effects and colorizing and everything that's available, is the fact that we can go under the parameters and we can modify pretty much anything. And this is one of the things I love. All right, so let's go under the gun and we're going to choose some different ones. And let's just look for something. There's a Beretta, a Colt. That's, I like that one the best so far. M16, too much spread there, 12 gauge. It's kind of fun, but I, I, I feel like the Colt 45 is looking the best. What do you guys think? Good starting place? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with that, but I'm going to change the glow color. So instead of doing this, you know, orangey kind of a color, let's do something like a blue, something a little more sci-fi and click OK. Uh, maybe go a little darker into that. Let's try this. As I go darker, it's going to put a little more color in there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now the mid color. Let's grab a, another shade of, of blue. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little more interesting. So let's try the rotation so we can kind of see how it rotates around different parts of that effect. So it's literally what it's doing is this is a 3D kind of a sphere and it's rotating the 3D sphere. So you could have it pointing more towards you or having it come straight out. Let's change the elevation, which is the angle. So we're going to point this down a little bit. Because if it was an exhaust, you wouldn't have it pushing straight up because, you know, that would not be good for people around. So you want to kind of push it down a little bit. Great. If it's too bright, we want to show more of the color. We could turn the brightness down. And this makes it a little bit more mysterious and wispy. Like, you know, if I was going to do that, I would change that glow color to a darker blue. And there we go. And now it starts to look a little more, um, uh, you know, like a... I don't even know what word I'm trying to think of a word, you know, like Star Trek-y kind of thing. And let's turn the brightness up a little bit. All right, cool. Now we can change different things like, you know, changing the position. Let's change the length of it. We can make that really huge or let's make it a little bit shorter. And let's make the width a little less so it's not so uh, long, uh, so wide. And then, of course, you know, we have more control over the different types of brightness and the puff thing, you know, like this is the puff. 
So if you want to make it look more Star Trek-y, increase that. And then of course, you know, if you don't want any details and you just want a kind of a clean flame, you could go there. Or if you want it a little more puffy, factory. What's the word I'm looking for, guys? There's a word I'm looking for um, that is a plasma. Plasma is what I was thinking of. If you want more of a plasma, you could take it down there. Um, so yeah, these are these are fun effects to play with. You know, as you can see, we can change pretty much, you know, anything we want with this thing. Let's make the glow more or make the glow less. See what we can do. We can just, it's just literally you can change anything you want. All right, so I think, you know, that's kind of cool, but I don't know. I like it a little more puffy and maybe a little bit more detailed. There we go. So what do you guys think about that? Is that something you like? You know, I, th I think it works pretty good. And if I want to use this again, um, I just click OK. And what that's done is it's literally created that preset. So I could go back to, you know, other ones. Oh, there's a rifle from the lantern. Core disruptor. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So now I can go through and I can look at some of the other presets and just say, hey, do any of these look like something I want to use? Yeah, now let's go back to the one I created, which is right there. And we're able to save that as a preset. So we can come back and any time we come back, that's going to be there. Great. Now I could apply this as it stands right now, or I could create some kind of a color effect while I'm here inside of optics. So why don't we do that? So we're going to hit this little plus and this is going to give us a new layer. Now you can show or hide that layer by, you know, clicking on these. See that will show or hide each layer. But we're going to work on this layer and I want to apply, let's do some kind of a color effect over the top of it. So I don't even have to create it as a separate layer in Photoshop if I don't want to. Now you might want to, and, uh, and, and, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes I would like to do that just because it'll give me a little more flexibility, but let's try photographic. And, um, uh, now there's many, many different uh, sets of presets, color presets, but we're going to use the photographic ones here today. Well, at least for this tutorial. And let's just go through it until we find something that we like. So we've got kind of green ones. We've got different kind of colors. And I'm just going to scroll maybe the bluish one. We've got amber. I just feel like maybe the bluish ones might look good, but maybe not. Let's see. We've got reddish ones. We've got orange, deep yellow. See all the different colors we can apply. I think I kind of like the light yellow effect, but it's a little strong. So I'm going to drop the opacity down. So see how we can change the opacity on any layer. And I'm going to drop that opacity down to about there. And I think that's going to kind of work. So if I want to apply this, we just hit the little gear icon. Never use red, says Jason. Good to know. Why, why is that, Jason? I'd love to know. Um, does it make it look like just a bad white balance? Um, Jason Ritter said, never use red. I'm just curious why. Um, I'll give him a second to write his answer and I'll read it out. All right, so now that we've applied it, notice it's a smart filter. So that means at any time I can turn it off, I can turn it on, I can adjust the intensity of it. I can go back into optics, you know, by double clicking. And, um, you know, we get right now, I double click that, which gives us the blending options. So we can adjust the opacity of that filter see that so we can make that more subtle we can change the blending modes there's a lot of different things that we can do in there i'm just going to click ok keep it full strength um and uh the yellow makes it look like a faded c print says warren um <laughs> tracy's saying to rose shelley if he does get optics you'll never see him again because yeah there's a lot to play around and experiment okay so let me tell you what the guys are doing with this uh before we move on i want to let you know about the special which is a ridiculously good special um and this is it here i don't know if there's anything here i shouldn't be showing you but <laughs> this is what they told us. So the Black Friday sales, up to 50% off all video and editing plugins. 
So um, the new permanent licenses are 50% off. So that would be optics, which is what we're using here. But they're giving us an additional 5% off um, if you use this code here. BF2021-PSCAFE-5. Can you guys all see that? Let me copy this. So if you put that code in, I guess you're going to get the 55% off or the individual products, 25% uh, off. Mocha, these are the video products. So this is um, pretty freaking awesome. And this is supposed to end December the 3rd and um, they're going to keep it active until Sunday night. So I guess they're going to extend the sale <laughs> exclusive here. You guys heard it first. And let me just give you that code nice and big so you guys can see it. And I'll, I will paste the link into the comments here. And if you're watching the replay, you're part of the replay crew. This is in the comment, not the comments, in the notes there. What do you, whatever you call that, the description. So you'll see that in the description. And I'll give you guys the, the link. Let's go back to this. And I'll just post this link for you guys in the chat right now. So this is the special they're giving us, and I'll repeat this at the end, but you know, we're not, this is not a sales pitch and we're not going to get into, you know, a whole sales pitch here. So, um, that link there is, well, let me just put that up just for a second. So if you guys are watching and you just want to do a screen capture, uh, you could do a screen capture of this and I'll just throw up this under here and so that's the discount code that will get you the extra five percent this is the link to go to so take a screen capture of that I'll give you five seconds five four three two one gone all right so we will go back to working on our effects now, before I continue with this, I do want to show you guys something that is new. Now, optics, if you're a photographer, graphic artist, and you're working with still images, optics is still the product that you want to be working with. However, I have had people, and uh, some of you guys have asked the question, and I'm just going to rasterize this just so I can show you something quickly. Um, it might work on a smart object, but I want to show you the new... Uh, there we go. I'm just rasterizing that layer just so I can show you something. So people have said, well, what if I want to animate these effects? Can I animate the effects? So from Optics, no, you can't. But a lot of the video products, including a lot of the plugins from Sapphire, have been ported into Photoshop, and those are part of Optics. But if you're wanting to do this, and I, I think under Boris Effects Sapphire, I've never showed this before. It's brand new. Um, so a lot of you probably haven't seen this. So if you get the entire, the suite or the video products, the Sapphire now has a plugin for Photoshop. This has never been there before. It's brand new. And how it works is we can apply even more filters, you know, the special effects type of filters. Uh, there's a ton of them here. Now it works a little bit different. You know, with, I don't know. What does dissolve rays? I don't even know what they are. We'll plug it in here, but these are working with uh, nodes. So the nodes are you just essentially drop something in there and it applies it. And uh, I don't know, dissolve percent. There we go. Okay, so it's doing these kind of effects here. So you can create more effects. Look at this. Oh, yeah, okay. You've seen these rays. You've seen these exact ones on title screens, movies, right? You've seen, you've seen that, right? TV shows. And the, literally, these are the same effects that they use on these TV shows. But the thing about these is these can be animated over time. So that is the big deal about working with Sapphire effects. We can go in Photoshop. We can create our, um, our effects. Then they can be, you know... We can do, you know, different things with these and these can be animated. We can save them and then those presets can be brought into Sapphire effects. And in Sapphire effects, we can take this as a preset and we can, we can literally animate all the different properties of all these different things that we could be working on. You know, it could be something else here like the puddle. 
Now let me just delete that one and I'll show you the puddle. You know, and so this will go all the way up so it dissolves. So, you know, all these type of effects and transitions, um, you know, these can be animated. So if that's something you guys are interested in, um, that discount code and everything I gave you will also apply to that. Now you can apply those Sapphire effects, you know, like I just did there. I guess I could have just, um, you know, apply them as, you know, to our still images inside of Photoshop. So yes, we have the ability there to um, bring them into Sapphire and we can animate them or we can literally work with them right here inside of Photoshop and apply these filters here. So you can you can build these in here as well. So let's just do that. So Tracy says a smoking deal. It really is um, because these things are, you know, these things are not cheap and they don't normally offer these kind of uh, I don't even know what an edge flash is I probably should do something that I know what it's gonna look like <laughs> um, you know I don't know let's do a convolve comp let's pop this in here and okay so I just want to just let you know, I'm not a super expert on this right now. So this might not be the right effect. Let's just delete that one and let's apply something that we can use. Um, let's do warp drops. That sounds fun. Let's see what warp drops. Okay. And then if you wanted to, you know, of course, change everything, you can apply it. So there we go. So you can apply these effects and use them on your still images in Photoshop. So they're not just for working with video. So I figured I'd mention that. All right, great. Why don't we move on to another image now? And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Let me bring up my library here. And our libraries are floating somewhere. So I'm going to choose Window Libraries once again. And they're going to pop back here. There they are. When you're working on the, the dual screens, it makes it a little easier to see um, what we're working on. Okay, so I'm going to open a couple of images here. I'm going to open this background and I'm going to open up our model. So we're going to do some, you know, simple effects here. We're going to drop her on the background. So what we're going to do is just select the background quickly in Photoshop. So let's grab our quick selection tool and just draw around quickly. Maybe I went a little too quickly. I'm going to hit the Alt or Option key and just kind of clean that up. So notice the Alt or the Option will take away from that selection. You know what? I'll probably use a different tool for that, that edge. Let me clean up this. And I'm just going over there just to kind of show you how it works. See that? Keeping within the area. Notice I'm not going outside of that area that I want to select. And I'm even letting it kind of creep up to the edges on its own. Now, if you've gone over, we can fix that. But the other way we can do it is we can combine tools. So if we do, say, the Polygon Lasso tool. And I want to add this to the selection. I'll just select here, and I'll go to the end, and I'll just go up, and then just close that. And that will add to the selection. And that works really well for getting those straight edges. So if you're working with straight edges, Polygonal Lasso tool. Um, and in fact, notice we went a little over so we could also use the shape tools like the rectangle tool so see how that one there we want to take away so i'm going to hit the alt or the option is going to take away and i'm just going to do a rectangle and it's just quick and easy so make a combination of the different tools when you're making these selections i think the mistake that people do is they try to do everything just using one tool and one tool is not necessarily fitting all the certain parts of a selection to work better with other parts or other tools so, so I want to get the hair, so we're going to choose Select a Mask. There we go with the Select a Mask. Let's make the opacity uh, go all the way. And then we're just going to grab the hair or the Refine Edge Brush. And I'm just going to go around there and see if we can get that just to select the hair a little better. Now, we're working on an inverted version of this, so it's a little different than maybe what you have worked on this before. You're probably used to working it the other way. And, uh, you know, that's far from perfect. In fact, it's probably worse, but that's okay. 
Let's see how that's going to look. Let's go down to the end here and we're going to choose decontaminate colors. That will get those edges a little bit better. And we're going to new layer for layer mask. No, we're just going to do a, well, let's try that and see what happens. Yeah, that's going to work. So all I need to do now is just invert this. So control or command I will invert it. And yeah, I did mess up those edges. Ah, I knew it. Okay, no big deal. We just go in here. We're just going to grab our brush that we want to bring that back, right? We want to bring it back. What color brings it back? White, control X. And we're just going to paint this back in here. Actually, did I go the wrong way or what's going on here? Do I have it? Okay, so when this is not working, there's a reason. Ah, flow is low. Let's turn that flow all the way up and also hit control D to make sure there's no selections active and that, that brings it back. Yep. There we go. Okay. So grab our brush options under our brush options, turn off our transfer. Remember what we said before, and we're going to make a hard brush. We can do it here. So change that and just kind of clean that up. You know, looks like something got a little glitchy in there. Okay. No big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and we're just going to do that selection again. We're just going to choose select and we're going to choose to reselect. So there's our selection. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to mask this out. Now I'm going to invert the mask, hold down the out or the option key, hit the mask that will invert it. There we go. Hides the background much better. Let's combine these two. Same way as before. Click and drag up to the background we want to drop it on. Release it. Let's make it a little bigger. Control T, Command T on the Mac. And I'm just going to increase it. Now, best practice, if you're working on this and you want to do best practice, would be to make the background smaller. But in this case, because we're not printing it, and it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we're still only viewing this at 40%, so you guys are not going to see any loss of resolutions. For the sake of speed and time, we're just going to do it that way. All right, cool. So what I want to do now is I want to unify these. Um, thank you, Danielle. She said it was nice. Um, I want to unify the colors. So let's look at a new feature in Photoshop, and that's the filter, and we are going to use the neural filters. So with these neural filters selected, uh, we're going to choose harmonization. This is a newer edition. And uh, it's going to take a second for that. Oh, of course, we need to select what do we want to harmonize it with. So harmonization is taking the layer we're working on and we're going to make it blend in with the background layer. So select the layer, choose the background and watch what happens on the tones and the on the image. Give it a second there. Much better. The colors and everything match. But maybe it's a little bright. So let's just take the brightness down just a little bit. Let's go a little bit more. OK, what I want to do is I want to keep the brightness on our subject, but kind of fade it a little bit into the edges. So I'm going to take it just a little bit brighter. See what we're doing there? We're making it a little brighter, but I want to fade it off on these edges. So I don't want it bright on the edges. You know what I'm saying? I want to add some kind of a vignette. Now, in this tool, a lot of you might not have been aware, we have a masking tool. So we can mask. So I want to hit the minus mask and notice what I did is I just painted to make sure I was using the right mask. Sometimes you don't know. And the opacity is all the way up. I don't want to have the opacity all the way up. I'm going to take it down a little bit. And we're showing the mask overlay. So what I want to do is fade the edges. So I'm going to make the brush larger. Now your bracket keys unfortunately don't work at the moment. So you have to use the slider. It's quite common for Adobe to introduce a new feature and then just kind of focus on stability and then they bring the juicy features later. So I would imagine, you know, things like the keyboard shortcut and stuff like that will probably work later. All right. So I just want to paint those edges. And let me just undo this because that first stroke is not what I wanted. OK, so we're going to get these edges and we're just going to kind of fade them. And let's do the same with the foreground here. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of blending that. Great. 
And let's go a second time. So we're adding a little bit more density to that. Probably should have dropped the opacity down, but that'll work. This will give us the effect we want. So what we're doing is we're masking out these areas where we don't want to apply so much of the adjustment. And we're going to output this to a new layer. Yeah, new layer is fine. Click OK. Now notice that that layer is selected and you can see around the edges here, we can see our mask. So that means we've got it there. Now, if we want to apply that mask, all we get to do is just to hit the mask button and notice what it did. See how those, uh, those edges? Notice now, as I turn that layer on, notice our subject gets that color, but not the edges. See how we faded that by using that mask. So I don't know if you guys are aware of that feature that was inside of that. Most of the neural filters have that masking and it's worth using. Now those edges look a little bit weird. So why don't I just fix that? Control click on our subject here and I'll show you a quick easy way to do that. We're going to choose select modify. And uh, what we want to do is modify our selection and we're just going to contract this by two pixels. And then we're just going to inverse it. Command shift I for inverse. And I'm just going to paint around the edges to get rid of that edge. You guys might have seen that edge on there. It didn't look good, right? So I want to see what I'm painting. So I want to keep this selection active, but I don't want to be distracted by those marching ants. Control or Command H will hide that selection. Now the selection is still active, but it's just hidden so we can see what we're doing in the mask. Now I want to paint, so I'm going to grab my brush. Now what do we want to do? We want to turn the lights off on those edges or hide it. So if a black brush, I just go around the edges and notice that we can get rid of those edge halos or edge fringing is really what it's called. And we can just paint it away. Now, if you guys missed some of these steps and you want to see it, don't worry. The replay will be live right after I'm finished here. So you can go back and watch that. Control D will turn off the selection. And now we have a better edge. Awesome. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go in and apply some coloring filters here inside of optics. Now, I could colorize and apply the effects separately on the foreground and the background if I wanted, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put these all into a smart object. So I just select all the layers and click convert to smart object. As I mentioned before, Optics works with a smart object. So we're going to choose filter and we're going to choose bars effects, Optics. And here we are back inside the plugin. And what it's going to do is it's always going to show the previous used filter. So to reset, just click the little gear reset arrows and now we're back, we have reset and now we're kind of working on the image. Now some stuff is around the edges it's hidden which is why you can see those white areas around the edges. Don't worry about that. It's just showing the entire image. You know, we'll crop that down. All right, so let's have a look at some different things we can do here. We've got different color effects. Now, if you're using a higher resolution, you'll see all of this in one go. In this case, you know, it's going to be a little bit different. So why don't we look at some different coloring effects we can do. We could choose, you know, just a solid color, which is not really going to give us what we want. You know what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to undo this and I'm going to create a new a layer here just so we can apply our effects to a separate layer. And uh, why don't we do some different things? I don't know if this haze is going to be very interesting, but let's apply it. Eh, it's not bad. And uh, haze one. So if you want to see what it looks like before and after, just turn that on and off. I don't think haze is something we want to do. So the nice thing about it is unless I create a new layer, if I don't want to be using that particular one, we can just go to a different image. Notice that as we choose different ones, it's just literally just going to apply that different effects, basically going to overwrite the effect we're working on. All right, let's keep going. We're going to go into the film lab, and I think we've got some fun stuff here. We've got film stocks in here. 
which will emulate different types of actual film. So, you know, we've got Coda Color, Coda Chrome. We've got all of these. I think let's do some of that. Let's start with this. Wow, that's interesting. And see what we can do. We can emulate these different ones. There's there's plenty to choose from. Um, Fuji. I used to shoot with Fuji um, Velvia. Did you guys ever shoot with that? I literally used to use that film. I liked it because of the contrast it would add. And I can see it's still got that saturation in the contrast like the old film did. Um, let's do this gum over gum tricolor. I like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to drop the opacity of it. So we just have a little bit of that effect. There we go in the middle. And this is probably going to look better in our overlay blending mode. So we can change. Notice we can change the blending modes and the opacity here. I kind of like it there, but I feel like it's blocking our model a little bit. It's plugging her up. So I want to remove the effect from there. So what we can do is we can actually create with these different ones. Um, you know, we can do different things that like we can select in there. We can apply a mask and I'm going to use a paint as the mask. So what it's going to do is it's going to give me a brush. And I'm going to make that brush bigger and I'm just going to start to paint with the brush. And notice what it's doing here is it's applying our effect just to our model. So we can choose the option to invert the mask. And now it's applying it just to the background and not our model. And of course, see how we can add to it there. I'm just painting there and I'm just kind of refining that now. Great. Let me just go back though to where we were. Now notice that that effect is showing full. And this just makes it easy for you to see the area you're working on. Once you go back to the layer, notice it adjusts the opacity and the blend mode to what we had. So when you're working on the mask, and you grab that brush tool, it's going to show you the effect full and it just makes it very, very easy to see. Once again, you know, if I put it into normal mode, turn the opacity all the way up, it would look like it did. Makes it easy to work in the mask. Nice. Let's add another color effect over the top. Let's stack this up a little bit. Now, once again, you know, we've got grads and tints here. Some of these are fun. Uh, we've got the image settings. You know, we can sharp and we can do different things. Let's go to, hmm, we've got so many to choose from. Sometimes I'm not even sure where to uh, start. This is what I want here, color correct. This has effects from movies. So these are the same color grades that you would see on movies, you know, from AI. I, that looks pretty good. Alien, you know, we've got liter literally we can apply these color grades from the films. I'm going to use the AI one. It's kind of fun. And once again, I like what was happening with that mask. So I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to drag with a new mask up there and see what happened when I did that. I duplicate the mask and now that takes the effect away from our model. So I don't have to paint that mask again. You can just simply drag between these layers and get that effect. And once again, we're going to take the opacity down a little bit. Just kind of building this up, blending it in. Um, all right, we're getting close. I think we're going to create a new layer. And the last thing I'm going to put on here is a lens flare because we can. And also, there's just incredible lens flares in here. Now, the some people get this plugin just simply for the lens flares because if you guys have ever worked inside of Photoshop and you applied that default red lens flare, it's a great effect and you're allowed to use it once in your career because every time people see it, it's like, oh, the Photoshop lens flare. So we're going to click on lens flares and of course we can go to the parameters and create any lens flare we want, but I like to start with the presets. Now remember, these presets, you can create your own like we did earlier on. If I want to see what does an anamorphic look like, look like? That's kind of cool and I could reposition it here. Now I could try other ones and notice that they're going to respect my positioning. So, you know, we can audition different ones. I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. And, uh, and notice we can go through these different types of effects. Oh, the car rear light is kind of interesting. That's very interesting. Um, 
and you can see that it's just going to keep that. Uh, that's a funny JJ trick. Yeah, obviously JJ Abrams, some of his famous style. Uh, laser web. Ooh, that's kind of neat. So if you're working with someone, you know, and you create a cybernetic eye or something, that would work kind of cool. Uh, Orange rays. Outland. I think the Outland looks kind of cool. Um, you guys want to see a few more? It's just fun playing, like literally. You know, there's just so many of these flares we can experiment with. If you guys see one there and you really like it, drop it into the comments. And let me know. And don't say that one. Give me the name because I won't remember what that one was. Um, I'm going to try Outland is one I kind of like. Um... Andrew wants to sell his body. Okay, well, you can sell it to science if you want. I'm kidding. I know he's talking about his camera body. Um, I, well, actually, I've already got a buyer. I'm selling one of my camera bodies too, but I, I have a buyer already. So, um, all right. So why don't we start with this flare and we can go under the parameters and uh, we can change things. We can change everything, literally. You know, if we want to blur it or make it sharper, I think we're going to go with the sharp one. You know, we can make it high or low as far as that radius. And notice not just the flare, but also the uh, reflection, the lens reflection is also changing. We can change the width of this, you know, so you can change, you know, literally everything. And the center of this is white. What if we make it more of a yellow? See how that looks. Interesting. Maybe too yellow. Let's make it a little less saturated little less saturated even more so I like to just put a little color sometimes when you're doing these CG effects a little bit of color goes a long way like way further than you would expect um, now the gamma is going to create an interesting effect here see what the gamma does is it works on a kind of a contrast really so we can get a really kind of a strong effect here um, and then if we do that you probably want to turn your brightness down a little bit to compensate this is going to be a little bit more um there we go so this is going to create a little bit more lumpy kind of an effect anamorphic i think it's kind of fun um background bright brightness see how background if it's getting too dark you can make the background lighter or darker to match so this is the atmosphere so right now it's combining with a screen mode we could go to the add mode and notice it gives us a little bit more contrast and punch. So these are using different blend modes. You could create a flare only. So if I created this flare only and I output it, but, but you know what? I'm going to do that. Watch this. I'm going to output the flare only. It's going to take a second to apply because, of course, we did this on a smart object. I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rasterize the top here. And because I just want to save that by itself. And the reason I rasterize it is because I'm going to change the smart object. And if you change the smart object on anything, um, what tends to happen is uh, both of them will change. So I'm going back into optics. So that's a nice thing about the smart object. I can go back in. You know what? I'm going to take this flare away. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to essentially create a version we're going to apply this with all the other effects because I like what we built and so there's all the other effects applied because I changed it and I'm putting the flare on a separate layer and that way I can change the blend mode of this into you know something else let's do a screen blend mode and see how we can put the flare on its own layer now. And that enables me to adjust it separately. So if I want to, you know, change the opacity or change different things on the flare, we can by putting it on a new layer. Now, the other nice thing about that is when we do this, if I go into the normal mode and keep my opacity all the way up, I could take a screen capture of this or go to my library. Um, and this is just kind of a fun, you know, extension of what we can do. Drag that into the library. And you'll see that we've got that. So now we've got that flare. Let me just go back into the screen mode here. You can see it there. But now that I've got this, I've got it forever. 
So anytime I want, I can just drag it into any image from the library, change the blend mode to screen and you know, take that effect away. And look at that, you've got that flare now. That flare is available for you at any time. Now, if you see an edge there, it's easy. We just clamp it down, control L for levels and just take the blacks and just clean up the blacks. Notice the edge there, see that? As I push the levels in the black, that edge disappears, it becomes pure black. And we can adjust this. We can make it brighter, hit the whites, and see how you can change that flare to be anything you want. So I'm going to put this flare at the very bottom here. And I only want it behind the bike. So I'm going to create the mask. And just grab the selection here. And let's just I should grab a brush. So we want to hide it. So what color are we using, guys? Black, right? Black hides it. So I just paint it away and you know probably use a soft edge brush here to blend it. And uh, let me grab my Wacom pen because I'm trying to do this by hand. And uh, we can just gently see how we can just gently start to blend that in. And then we've got you know some kind of a thing behind the bike. Um, let's blend it a little smoother here. Let's take the flow down. And if you want to blend something, you can literally just do that with that flow and just paint on those edges with a low flow. Now, if you were using a mouse, you, you would do the same thing, but the flow would be a little bit lower. And I'm painting back here with the opacity. Um, see how we're just blending that in? All right. And that's how we would put all of that together. So I'm going to take questions in a sec. Um, a class on brushes, Jason. That's a good suggestion. I think we should um, earmark that. Let me know, guys, if you want to see a class on brushes because there's a lot we could do on brushes. All right. Now, I just want to mention one more time the Boris effects here. The Optics is the plugin we were using. Use this link. And then if you use this That'll take you to the discount, the Black Friday discount that doesn't end till Sunday. So that's up to 50% off. But apply this code and you'll get an additional 5% off on top of that. So if you guys are wanting to get into optics, I highly recommend it. Um, very, very good value for money um, because you get all the colorizing effects, but you also get all the visual effects. It's it's truly a great plugin that I enjoy using and, and I do use it. And I know a lot of you guys do. So anyway, um, that's kind of what we've got time for this week. We'll be back next week. And don't forget to drop some of your images into our Facebook group. And, and we'll be looking at some of your images next week. And uh, and just kind of thank you guys for that. Oh, let me post that link again. I apologize. I did not post the link into there. Let's drop in here. And that's the link there to the um, optics. Zach Multimedia wants to, uh, sorry, Rod Shelley wants to do the brushes. Um, so those of you who um, are new here, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't miss any tutorials because every Tuesday I do a quick two, three minute, minute tutorial. Every Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, we do our live stream here at Photoshop Cafe, which is live from lockdown. Um, guys, do me a favor, hit that like button. A lot of you have not hit that like button yet. So before you go, smash that like button into dust, as we like to say sometimes. What it does is it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So when those likes go there, it lets more people know, hey, we're streaming. Come and join us. It's a good stream. You know, it's fun. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's basically it. Um, and thanks everybody. Let me just drag the chat into our main window here. If you guys are joining us on the replay crew, you won't be able to do this chat. This chat is only live while we are actually streaming live. Now, if you're watching and you're part of the replay crew, still hit that like button and subscribe, but drop your comment underneath in the comments section. I read all those comments. I respond to a lot of those comments and, uh, and I appreciate it. And once again, guys, you know, we do these tutorials every Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific. And also I drop those quick tutorials every 
Tuesday morning. Now, the Tuesday morning ones, just to let you know, they're live here on YouTube. But if you want the written steps, go to photoshopcafe.com. It'll be the newest tutorial. And I do the written steps usually on Wednesday, usually the next day. So um, if you want those additional features, they're right there. Um, and once again, the replay will be live forever. So um, thanks, guys. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. All right. I'll do a quick afterglow. Just, you know, quick shout out for everybody. Walker Pest, Andrew Nichols, uh, Chris Bacon, Daryl P. Steelman, um, Andrew, thanks for joining us. Andrew Stuart Braith Braithwaite, Kiora uh, from New Zealand, Rod Shelley, thank you, Rayel, all regulars, uh, Yvonne, good to see you, Susan, Zach Multimedia, Hannah, thanks for joining us, Tracy, great to see you again, Dojo, good to see you once again, um, Stuart, Stanby, Odd Gear, um, I know we had um, uh, Pigeon River, good to see you. Uh, Michael Stein, Rod Shelley, Yvonne, if I say your name twice, I apologize, Zach, uh, Zach Multimedia, um, we've got Dana Carr, good to see you, Photomaker, great to see you, Rod Shelley, um, every single one of these are regulars, most of you haven't missed a single episode, which is amazing, I'm, I'm impressed, um, I obviously haven't missed any episodes, um, <laughs> uh, so Danielle, good to see you. John, Jason, Dave, Stuart, and there's Zach Multimedia again. Good to see you. And Photomaker. All right, guys, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. I'm going to see you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do. We'll see what happens. Thanks, guys. Good to see the cafe crew live and the replay in the crew. Good to see you guys as well. Till next week.